Well, it's catch-up time. What? What's this? No, I said ketchup. And I don't mean ketchup, I mean... Never mind. It's tough to find good help nowadays, isn't it? Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, I have been woefully neglectful in my duties as your host recently, and I've let myself get behind in my Tom's A to Z feature. It's supposed to be every month, and I haven't done one since July. It's already October. I don't know how that happened, but that's 2020 for you. But uh, yes, yeah, so it, it's my own darn fault that I'm having to play catch up right here. And uh, But hey, consider it a special supersized episode of Tom's A to Z for you. And for those of you who uh, are not familiar with it, who may be newcomers to my channel, I think I've had a fair number of new subscribers since I did my last A to Z, Tom's A to Z is my monthly series in which I talk about one album by one artist from each letter of the alphabet from A to Z. Approximately each letter. I have to leave a couple letters out here and there. But uh, yes, and the theme for this year's Tom's A to Z has been records I found in the $1 LP section at House of Records. It's a great little record store that I love to go to. It's uh, located in Eugene. I did a little tour of it in one of my recent Walkabout Talk About videos, so look for that one on my channel and watch it if you love browsing record stores. It's a great video. Great, great little store. But anyway, yes, uh, I've been trying to, the, one of my purposes for doing the A to Z this year was I've been trying to find albums or artists that not only have I not heard, but that I've not heard of. Uh, and I've, I've uh, succeeded more often than not in that, and I've found some very, very interesting treasures. But this episode, I'm actually, it's actually going to be a little interesting because I've uh, got probably half of the ones that I'll be covering. I'll be covering six letters of the alphabet in this one. I normally do two in each video, but since I have to play catch up, uh, I'll be covering, incidentally, the letters O through T in this video. Uh, but yeah, the like three of them in here are artists that uh, are relatively well known. Uh, maybe not known to everyone who watches my channel, but probably to a fair portion of you guys. But anyway, enough wasting time. I've got a lot of ground to cover in this video. Got six letters of the alphabet to get through. So let's just jump on the old tomato truck. I don't know where that uh, metaphor came from. I, oh, let, let's blame the ketchup gag at the beginning of the video. You know, ketchup, tomato, I, I guess. I guess that's where my head was at. But anyway, representing the letter O in this year's cycle of Tom's A to Z is Marie Osmond. Yes, she is one of the couple of uh, more well-known artists that I was alluding to a few minutes ago. Yes, uh, Maria, of course, is the, I believe, was the only sister, correct me if I'm wrong, in the big uh, musical family. The Osmond family was very popular. Their heyday was back in the 70s, had a lot of big hits. And uh, my sister was a fan of the Osmond family. I actually inherited the Best of the Osmonds uh, CD from her uh, CD collection. I think probably because she probably had a crush on Donnie back in the day, as a lot of, uh, a lot of girls did. And I don't know. Maybe some guys, too. I don't know. But anyway, yes, this is her fourth solo album, released in 1977. It's called This Is The Way That I Feel. And in, in researching this, it was actually an interesting coincidence that her previous album ranked at the same peak Billboard 200 position that this one did, number 152. Very random number, but they both happened to peak at the same spot. But uh, yeah, and she this was not her most successful album. She had uh, her, I believe her first album was her most successful. Uh, but yeah, the single of the title track hit number 39 on the Billboard 200, so this yielded at least one top 40 hit. And uh, yeah, uh, this was actually a pretty pretty enjoyable album. The one holdback that I have from this is uh, her voice. There's something about her voice that was just not... just didn't sit well on my ears. I'm not sure what it was. Uh, I should probably check out more of her work. Uh, I don't know if it was just her voice on this album in particular, or if her voice just would not strike me well in general. Something about the timbre of her voice that just didn't sit well with me. Uh, but yeah, this album overall, this album has a very much of a pop sound, but with some disco influences. Not unusual considering this was 1977. But uh, yeah, uh, aside from my misgivings about her voice, pretty enjoyable album. Yeah, one of the highlights of this album was the song Play the Music Loud. Uh, you guys know I've got a penchant for songs about music or songs about other songs, so that one uh, went right up my alley there. And another one that I uh, rather enjoyed was called You're My Superman, You're My Everything, a very, very nice ballad. And she actually does several covers on this album, four covers, in fact. Miss You Nights, which is a cover of a Cliff Richard song, which was also done by the British boy band Westlife later on. 
uh, back in the 90s or 2000s, I guess it was. Uh, all he did was Tell Me Lies, which was done by Kim Carnes as well as Dottie West. And I believe Dottie West is a country singer, and that's one thing about Marie, at least in the early part of her career, Marie had uh, some crossover success in the country genre. So that's that's one thing, one, one testament to her appeal overall. Uh, and then uh, two more covers were Run To Me, which was a cover of a Bee Gees song. And again, you know, the 70s. Be it the Bee Gees kind of ruled the 70s, so that uh, doesn't strike me as strike as anybody as any surprise. And also, Where Did Our Love Go, which was a cover of a Supremes hit from the Motown era, one of the biggest songs of the Motown era. And I love Motown, so that song was an absolutely a winner for me. But uh, yeah, not a bad album. I'm considering uh, checking out her other stuff. Uh, I mean, for the price point, $1.00. How can you complain? Even if I didn't really, really love her voice, get into her voice. Uh, but as I said, I'm not afraid to check out anything that she, uh, any other albums that she might have recorded, just to see if her voice was maybe just an anomaly on this album in particular. So yeah, not a bad album at all. Okay, moving on ahead through the alphabet to the letter P, which in this case stands for Poco. One of the other uh, more well-known artists out of the A to Z this year that I was mentioning at the beginning of the vid video. Yes, Poco is basically a country rock band. I think that's how they've been described more often than not. Through their history, they started out, I think, back in the 60s, and uh, this is actually their 10th album, Indian Summer, which was released in 1977, the same year as Marie Osmond's album. And uh, this one was a uh, modest hit on the Billboard chart. It, ran, it came in at number 57 on the Billboard 200. And uh, yeah, this, these guys remind me of, at least on this album, they remind me of The Eagles and, to a lesser degree, Steely Dan. Uh, my sister was a huge fan of both The Eagles and Steely Dan, and so it kind of uh, stands to reason that I would actually rather enjoy these guys. And their similarity to The Eagles kind of uh, makes sense when I discovered that both Randy Meissner and Timothy B. Schmidt were members of Poco at one point or another. Um, Meissner had actually left the band before this album, but this was the last album to feature Schmidt. So uh, there's one similarity for you. And the uh, Steely Dan connection comes in uh, with the fact that when I was looking over the liner notes, Donald Fagan of Steely Dan plays synths on two of the tracks on this album. So there you go. Uh, I enjoyed most of this album, uh, particularly side two, actually. Uh, Living in the band and Stay Night Until Noon were both kind of hooky and, and, well, they had me gently dancing to them while I was folding my laundry, if that's any indication of how uh, how fun they were for me. Uh, another great track on here is Downfall, which was a, a fun mid-tempo rocker, well, as rocking as a mid-tempo song can get. But yeah, if, if this was one of the more lukewarm received Poco albums, which its chart, chart standing kind of indicated, I don't know how representative it is of the rest of Poco's discography, but I'm kind of interested to check them out in further depth. I mean, I certainly like the Eagles well enough, so uh, yeah, this was actually fun. Uh, a very nice uh, first introduction to Poco. I've been aware of the, I was aware of the band before I just came across this album, so, and I was always kind of a little bit interested to check them out at some point, and A to Z afforded me the opportunity to do so. Okay, now I tried to mention at the beginning of each of my A to Z videos, at least I think I mentioned it at the beginning of this one, that I might occasionally skip over a letter of the alphabet if I can't find an album by an artist whose name begins with that letter. But as luck would have it, I actually did find a letter, an artist representing the letter Q for this year of Tom's A to Z. And the letter Q in this case represents Quarter Flash. This is a band from the 80s. Uh, they're probably one of the lesser known bands of the 80s, although they're still relatively popular. But uh, yeah, this is their third album, Back Into Blue. It was released in 1985. And, but this was their first album that didn't hit the top 40 of the Billboard 200. It only came up to number 150, so yeah, a very precipitous drop in the Billboard rankings. Uh, but uh, they are most well known for their uh, hit single off their first album, Harden My Heart. That was the name of the single. Uh, so those of you who listen to enough 80s radio or enough uh, 80s channels on Spotify or whatever will probably have heard that song. Great song. Uh, but and, and I don't know if it was popular enough uh, for them to be classified as a one-hit wonder band or not. But in my opinion, this album is just as good as their first two. It's just a, f a fun album. They're very much in the 80s new wave, synth wave style. So yes, a very uh, characteristic of the 80s sound, let's put it that way. And uh, as I mentioned, I've been aware of the Quarter Flash since the 80s, but I one thing I didn't notice until much later on, naturally, was that they actually originated in Portland, Oregon. 
So they're actually an Oregonian band. I did not know this. Uh, they remind me kind of, of uh, since they have a female lead vocalist, uh, all the other band members are men. Uh, since since the lead vocalist is a female, they remind me of Melissa Manchester, maybe, at her more rocking moments, her more upbeat moments. Uh, two of the really good songs on this album that really struck me were Talk To Me and Walking On Ice. Uh, another standout on here is Come To Me, which has a Caribbean beat. It's kind of a bit more uh, unusual for them. It's kind of fun, you know, very uh, not typical of their stuff. And then uh, Welcome to the City is another good upbeat song, and that one kind of reminds me of Blondie in a way, so it's got a bit more of a post-punk uh, sound to it. But yeah, this is a very good album, I thought. Uh, just excellent. Uh, check out Quarter Flash's entire discography, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, I'm very glad I added this one to my discography. I've, a I've also got their first two albums as well. So yeah, a fun band. Uh, very worth checking out if you like 80s stuff. Okay, guys, let's just keep the momentum going right along into the letter R. And in this case, R is for Jennifer Rush. This is her third album, Heart Over Mind, and it was released in 1987. And I think I might have been aware of Jennifer Rush back in the day. Um, in my adulthood, I don't recall her specifically. So I, I may have heard some of her songs on the radio back in the day, but I, I think she was, here in the States at least, she was a lesser known artist from that era. Although this album reached number one in Germany and stayed there for nine weeks. So, you know, in Europe, she was very successful. Uh, this, is, this album has a straightforward 80s dance rock sound. Reminds me a lot of Pat Benatar, basically. Uh, but her voice has a bit of a kind of a soaring, almost Celine Dion-like quality. So, you know, you, you have that kind of diva voice in a rock format, and that's kind of how you, uh, what you come up with with Jennifer Rush. It's, it's kind of interesting. It gives her a unique sound, I think. Uh, one of the standout tracks on here is Flames of Paradise, which is actually a duet with Elton John. So she re reeled in a big name for this album. Uh, and a couple other standouts are the title track as well as I Come Undone. And uh, two of the songs on, on this album, Search the Sky and Love of a Stranger, featured co-writing and keyboards by Harold Faltermeyer. And uh, you guys might know the name Harold Faltermeyer. He was uh, of 80s soundtrack instrumentals fame. He did the Axel F theme for Beverly Hills Cop. And he also did the Fletch theme and a couple of others. He was very big in the 80s uh, when it came to movie soundtracks. And then uh, another song on here, Call My Name, which is the final track on the album, was co-written by Michael Bolton. So a lot of big names were involved in this album. And it's honestly, I have to say, it's a, a very good album. As I said, the, the juxta juxta blah, 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 juxtaposition of her kind of soaring diva-like voice against the more rock and post-new wave arrangements gives her a very unique sound, I think. So yeah, I was very happy to uh, find this album. It's, it's one of my favorites out of this batch, I think. So yeah, very fun. And I'm thinking very strongly about checking out some of her other stuff, see what it sounds like. So yeah, very, very good album. Okay, now the next to last artist in today's video, representing the letter S, just might be the most recognizable name in my A to Z cycle for the year of 2020, and that is Billy Squire. Uh, some of you probably are at least familiar with the name. Yes, he is a hard rock artist. Uh, this is his third album, Emotions in Motion, released in 1982, and this was his second top five album. So yes, it was a fairly popular. And yes, uh, Billy Squire is basically a hard rock artist. Kind of reminds me of Sammy Hagar, Van Halen, maybe to a lesser degree ACDC. He doesn't have quite as much scream in his voice as ACDC's frontman does. But uh, And the album cover, in case it looks a little bit familiar to you, the uh, uh, artistic talent here, the cover is by Andy Warhol. So he was able to get a pretty well-known uh, visual artist to do his album cover. Uh, now, this album actually has what I believe is his biggest hit single, Everybody Wants You. And if you like just a, a hard rock and fun kind of song, really, really good driving beat, check out Everybody Wants You by Billy Squire. It's such a great song. And uh, it, it was a great way to kick off the album because that was the opening track on this album. Uh, the title track, which is the second track on the album, I believe, is also a, a great, great upbeat number. And it actually features Freddie Mercury and Roger Taylor of Queen. So, yes, Billy Squire was able to pull in the big names uh, for this album. Uh, and yes, a very, very good artist, a good album. Not sure if I'm going to... I, I'm not a big enough fan of that particular subgenre of rock that I don't know if I'm going to explore Billy Squire's discography any further, but uh, some other good songs on this album. It Keeps You Rockin', that's another really good one. Uh, Listen to the Heartbeat is the closer, that's a pretty good one. So yeah. Uh, a, a very, very decent album. Very good. Uh, so, yeah, and I was glad to add it 
to my collection. Yeah, for one dollar this album packs a lot of entertainment, so yeah. Okay now, rounding out this video and finally catching me up on A to Z, at least for now, is the artist representing the letter T. Well, they sort of represent the letter T. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, it's an, a band by the name of 2020. And yes, they spell their band name with numerals, not letters, but hey, the, the word 20 starts with the letter T, so I hereby declare that these guys represent the letter T. So if you don't like it, then I don't know what to tell you. It, it's my channel, so meh. Anyway, yes, uh, 2020 is a band that hails from Oklahoma. I had never heard of these guys before until I stumbled across this, across this album in the dollar section at uh, House of Records. And it looked interesting, so I decided to pick it up. And yeah, they ended up being a power pop band with a dash of new wave. So in that respect, they remind me a lot of The Cars. So if you enjoy The Cars music, look for these guys' albums. They're, they're, they're really cool. Uh, they've just got a lot of very catchy, up-tempo songs. Uh, in fact, I don't know if there were very many, I don't recall hearing very many ballads on this album, maybe one or two. It was mostly upbeat, fun, catchy uh, numbers. Uh, three of the songs that really stuck out for me were Life in the USA and American Dream, that was a closing track, as well as Nuclear Boy, which was the opening track. So yeah, very fun, very catchy stuff. Uh, one of the most pleasant surprises I've had in this whole year's uh, cycle of A to Z, so yeah. As, as much fun as I had listening to it, I honestly don't have much more to say about it. And that's that's kind of the thing that I've, I've mentioned before and on my channel. Sometimes you love mu the music that you love and you don't know why you love it. You can't explain, you can't put into words why you love it. And that's one of the case with this album, uh, this band 2020. I am definitely going to seek out their first album. And I can't recall if they put out a third album or not. Uh, but yeah, as I said, very fun stuff. Uh, really, really enjoyable. Okay, well, that was kind of exhausting, wasn't it? As I said at the beginning of the video, it's my own fault that I didn't keep caught up with A to Z, so I have nobody to blame but myself for giving myself all this work this month. But uh, fortunately, I only have two more months of A to Z left, uh, so I should have no problem keeping caught up from now on. But anyway, for now, that'll do it for Tom's A to Z for the month of October and September and August. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.